Today, uh, I'm going to give everyone a brief introduction about information technology and how IT is being used in accounting um, in this profession. Um, and uh, we're going to have some discussion and the purpose is just to uh, like give everyone a big idea of what this class is about. Um, and uh, just now everyone introduced yourself and um, I know that some of you already learned about some emerging technologies um, and know how to do programming like Python or R, uh, but maybe some uh, like others may, may not have this uh, knowledge. But today we are going to start from the same uh, point and we are going to learn everything together so you don't have to worry if you don't have any background this is what our uh, program is about so uh, while I uh, go through the slides uh, please feel free to uh, to ask me questions or uh, have any discussion that you want um, so uh, I'm going to first talk a little bit about uh, the history of information technology um, and uh, I will spend uh, most of the time on how the technologies are being used in business, uh, how uh, new business models are established based on the advancement in technology. And then I will introduce how uh, accounting profession um, in general uh, are being impacted by technology. And we are going to touch a little bit um, about how the pandemic is playing a role uh, in this whole um, ecosystem. Um, so information technology is basically uh, the technology that uh, deals with data acquisition, data storage, data organization, data processing, uh, information output, and information dissemination. Uh, so basically, if you have an IT system, the system is able to obtain the data. That's what we call the acquisition of data. And then uh, the platform or software is able to store the data that you acquire and also organize the data in a way that is, um, that is able to be processed by the machine. And then the data will be processed into information, and then the information will be distributed to the end user. Uh, so this is a, a very simple example of IT. So imagine you are uh, you have your uh, budget, and uh, you are purchasing your um, let's say grocery every day. So every day you uh, take a note on your expenditure on different items. And then, uh, so your expenditure on different items uh, every day is the data. And then you record them. Um, and uh, at the end of the month, you add them up. And that's the total expenditure for the month. And that total expenditure is the information on which you make your decision. Uh, so based on this total expenditure, you can adjust your uh, next month's budget or make other decisions. So even though IT sounds very uh, high tech, <laughs> uh, it's actually everywhere in our daily life, right? So you can, uh, this is a very basic uh, example to illustrate how information technology works. It's just a uh, way to uh, obtain information, process information, and digest and make decisions on the information. Um, so uh, there is a, a distinct, uh, there is a difference between data and information. So basically when we say data, uh, we most likely refer to the raw information, like the, uh, the individual expenditure. But then the information is the processed data that we make decision on, such as the uh, total expenditure. But this difference is very nuanced. So uh, people most likely use data or information interchangeably. So I just want to point out this tiny little difference uh, to uh, just, just for your information. Um, so 
we have many types of data out there. So we have uh, numeric data, textual data, image, audio, video. Um, and um, so uh, I guess uh, you know that uh, nowadays we are in this era called big data, right? So the big data, one of the big, uh, we are going to talk about big data in our later uh, classes. Um, but one of the definition of big data is that it has a diverse uh, set of uh, the type of data. So uh, now we have the social media, we have different uh, online platforms. Uh, the audio, video, and textual information uh, is growing um, tremendously. Um, so uh, in this class, we are going to talk about um, what does that mean to our accounting profession and uh, business in general. So we'll talk more about this uh, in our later chapter. Um, so the term computer is just um, a data processing system. And the system uh, is able to get inputs, uh, store the information, process the information, and output the information. Uh, so these are very basic concepts. So here, I just want to try our clicker. So yeah, so this is a very easy question, right? We already mentioned that uh, information technology is used to obtain the data, store the data, organize, process, and disseminate data. Uh, so this is uh, true. All right, I will just continue. So you will see that um, in our uh, class, we are going to embed these uh, easy but intuitive questions in our presentation uh, just to um, uh, like just to catch your attention um, and you don't have to be pressured about these uh, as long as you follow the class uh, these should be very uh, easy um, so i just introduced some basic concepts about it and here is a, a brief history of the evolution of information uh, technology um, so uh, IT actually started a long time ago. So the earliest technology that we store information is actually the written uh, symbols or word. Um, and that started thousands of years ago. So that's the earliest way people store information. Um, but that is not so efficient and, uh, uh, and uh, there are a lot of limitations in this way of um, information technology. Uh, but in the 1900, uh, there is a revolution that uh, that is uh, an important step uh, in the history of IT, and that is the punched cards. Um, so um, in uh, at that time, uh, people uh, want to uh, make good patterns on the on the cloth. So they uh, basically use the punch cards to store the information of the textile patterns. Um, and uh, basically, uh, the, there is a, a loom called Jacquard's loom. So um, this person invented um, this kind of technology. And uh, uh, this gives inspiration to the uh, later history of IT, especially uh, the programming languages. Um, I believe uh, Miklos has more knowledge about uh, punch cards because he has seen a real one. I haven't. I can only see from the pictures. She, she is just calling me old. <laughs> I, I actually, that it's totally true. I installed the uh, first computer in Latin America a, at uh, Catholic University of Rio when I was a uh, sophomore. They came into class and say, who speaks English? So I kind of, two, me and another guy, in, uh, second year engineering, uh, volunteered. And then we finished up four of us assembling a, a Burroughs machine. And Burroughs didn't know how to do it. So uh, we kind of read the manual and managed to put it together. And that machine had the only way to communicate with it was paper tape. It was a tape with holes on it. Progressively, we got punch cards, uh, 
and even before that, there were these switches on the machine. But punch cards were great. I, when I went to MIT, I actually wrote my four-turn programs in punch cards. And if you drop your deck, you had to assemble one by one together, and you never knew where the card was. <laughs> right, right. Um, so that was in the uh, 1800. I mean, the uh, punch cards technology started at 1800. And then after that, we invented electricity, which is a revolutionary information carrier. And then Morse invented this code called Morse code. And I believe most of us know about this code. And this is the foundation for electronic telegraph. Uh, and, and then um, we have this word uh, computer. But at that time, uh, the computer literally means a person who performs the calculation. Uh, it's not the calculator that we have nowadays that, that's a computer or digitized device. At that time, it's just person. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, but after that, um, uh, there's a famous um, scientist called Alan Turing. He's basically the first person who conceived a modern computer. Um, so Alan Turing is a, a, a genius in computer science, and uh, he unfortunately died early, um, but he has a huge contribution to the IT domain. Uh, so basically, he said that a computer is basically a machine that follows your instruction, human's instruction. Um, and this machine can perform all kinds of complex a complex computation just by following a set of rules. Uh, so if you have learned about programming, uh, you, you know that computers uh, deal with information by processing like, uh, like essentially zero and ones, right? So basically all the software apps, programs that we are using nowadays are just a little machine uh, or a device that follow the rules. Uh, so that's what uh, uh, Alan Turing called Turing machine. Um, so basically that's his um, uh, conceptualized more a computer. That's true uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, today's point of view. Um, okay. One more comment about Alan Turing. You all should be very thankful to him. Alan Turing was a Cambridge Don a professor, and he helped in the Second World War. And he broke the German Enigma code. Enigma machine was this machine that the Germans used to encrypt. And he mathematically broke it, and so the British could read what the Germans were intending to do by listening to their communication. That was, uh, he's probably, Churchill said that he was the guy that most contributed to the uh, Second World War. And uh, if you, there is a play about his life, which finished very sadly, very young. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, how is technology using counting? Uh, so that, we need to start from um, like in the ancient times, right? So in ancient times, people use abacus. Uh, does anyone know what abacus is? I guess we are not. Yes, yes. And abacus is like you count. You learn to count with that when you're little. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. So a uh, long time ago, before any you know digitized form of technology uh, existed. Uh, people use abacus to do all the calculations. And then we have adding machine, which is a, a, um, a more improved version of abacus. I don't know. I, I actually haven't seen an adding machine. <laughs> um, and uh, then we have uh, um, other elect electric calculator. But these calculating machines are still in uh, the like rudimentary form. Uh, 
but after the invention of uh, personal computer, uh, we start to use these computers and also some applications in computers, such as uh, especially the spreadsheet. Um, and uh, we and we use Microsoft Excel most likely. Um, and then in the recent uh, several decades, uh, we have different accounting software, uh, and we call it uh, basically enterprise resource planning system. And I will uh, talk a little bit about these systems later on. But we, uh, but at that time, there is a surge in these large scale. Uh, software, accounting software. Um, and at the same time, um, there is also a surge in auditing software. And uh, we are going to learn some of the software in our class, uh, especially ACL. Uh, and most recently, uh, there uh, we have uh, some emerging technologies, uh, especially artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning is a type of AI and robotic process automation. Some people also talk about blockchain smart contracts. So most recently, uh, we are looking at how these emerging technologies can be added on top of the accounting software uh, to, uh, uh, to enlarge or to improve the functionality of accounting related uh, technology. So in our class, most likely we will focus on the emerging technology, like how these technologies can be applied in accounting and auditing, uh, and we will learn how to use these technologies. Um, so I have some slides about IT essentials, and these are just very, very basic idea uh, about information technology. So if you are interested, you can read it after class. The slides are all available on Blackboard. Um, and I can send you uh, via email later if you uh, don't have access to Blackboard. Uh, so I'm going to jump to the uh, enterprise resource planning system. Um, so does any one of you uh, know about ERP system? Or have you heard about it? I guess not. Yeah. I, I, yes. I worked on a little bit about this. It's just basically a way to store data in a whole conglomerate almost. Um, and that's basically called the enterprise, uh, the ERP, basically. Right. Um, so, yes. So, ERP system basically is a, uh, is a system that integrates all areas of your business um, and put all the data into a single database. So if you uh, can see uh, this diagram here, so if you have a business, you may have different departments, right? You have, let's say you are a um, manufacturer. So you, you would have uh, your warehouse, your inventory, uh, your, um, your uh, purchase department sales, uh, and also you will have um, uh, the HR and uh, your financing department and, and other departments. Uh, so before the uh, before ERP system, uh, all, all different departments have their own system, which makes it really challenging for uh, managers to collect information from different places. Um, but, but ERP system basically integrates uh, the information from different places and put them together so that um, the managers or other stakeholders can easily access the information. So that's the idea about the ERP system. Um, so um, nowadays, um, most big, uh, big companies have ERP system in place, um, and uh, ERP system is also um, um, an important topic in accounting information system class. Um, so here, I just want to introduce this concept to you uh, because um, if you go to work, or, uh, like no matter you are, you will be accountant or editor, uh, you may um, um, like deal with ERP. 
at some point? Well, yes. they are using the ERP system every day because right. if they do any interaction, student registration, anything on the internet or at Rutgers, uh, Rutgers has a set of ERPs. It's not only one, it's like four of them integrated. So when you do and you complain about big bureaucracy and complication, it's because of the way they implemented the ERP. Right, right. And one of these days, I'll show you the architecture and we can talk a little bit about that and you can complain to me. Yeah. And so what happens nowadays is that um, some firms, especially the big ones, they have several ERP systems. And this is usually uh, due to their mergers and acquisitions. So uh, let's say uh, a beer company may purchase another beer company that uses a different ERP system. So in the end, some firms have several set of uh, ERP system, which is now causing some trouble uh, of integrating these systems. And that's actually one of the background uh, why RPA emerges because um, it's really costly to integrate these systems using uh, APIs or other uh, back-end technologies. So people want to invent a cheaper way to uh, do this integration and that's how a robotic process automation is invented, the, the motivation. So let's do this uh, clicker question for your response and yes, uh, this is true. A ERP system integrates uh, data from different departments or different functions into a single database, into a single system. Okay, cloud. Uh, so I, I think that everyone is using some sort of cloud computing, right? Uh, your Dropbox, your Google Docs. Um, now, nowadays, a lot of the services are uh, moved to, to the cloud. Uh, so basically, the cloud computing is a term that uh, that describes the network-based computing that takes over uh, that takes place over the internet. So that means uh, you don't need to have a um, uh, the the computing actually happens uh, in the in the cloud. What we say, right? Rather than on your local machine. Um, so I know that. Um, um, Nowadays, there is a cloud-based gaming, and so instead of purchasing a physical switcher, uh, you actually can play game via the internet. And uh, uh, so that's one application of cloud computing, right? For those of you who play games. Um, so uh, I just want to point out some advantages and disadvantages of cloud computing. Uh, so nowadays, um, many firms, um, especially uh, I would say smaller size firm, uh, they prefer cloud-based computing because uh, they don't have to purchase very expensive servers. Uh, and also they don't have to uh, you know, rent a place to store the server and maintain the server. So by using a cloud computing service, they can lower their uh, computer costs. Um, and also any costs related to uh, server uh, purchase, maintenance, and other uh, and other uh, related costs. And uh, besides cost saving, uh, there is also a, a potential improvement in the in your performance. Right, we say computing power because uh, you can just rent the desired computing power from the cloud rather than uh, purchasing the, uh, uh, the server with equivalent performance. Um, and also using the cloud service, you can access the documents wherever you are, as long as you have uh, internet. Uh, and also the cloud uh, computing doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't depend on the type of device you are using. Right? So you can access your Dropbox via your phone, via your tablet, via your PC. Um, and also, uh, you have to worry about your data loss, right? Because most of the time, uh, you can find your uh, documents in the cloud. 
um, uh, like uh, because sometimes we in, your, in our local machine we may have uh, mistakenly delete, delete some files, but if you do this in the cloud, uh, you can find some ways to back up your files. So these are the advantages of using cloud computing. Uh, however, cloud computing uh, can also have some um, disadvantages. Uh, like what I said, if you don't have internet, you cannot access the file. And also, uh, if your internet is bad, uh, your the speed is not satisfying. And uh, there are some worries about the, uh, the uh, cloud computing provider uh, may um, uh, may uh, look at your data, right? So you worry about your privacy. Uh, so there are still some disadvantages. So, um, uh, but nowadays, uh, more and more firms uh, like cloud computing, and they're moving their ERP system and other um, auditing or accounting software to to the cloud. Uh, so this is a trend that we're seeing nowadays. Okay. Uh, I would say, especially during the pandemic. Uh, there must be a surge in cloud computer related services. Okay, so uh, so previously uh, I basically introduced um, the information technology in general, and now I want to uh, spend some time on the so called emerging information technologies. Uh, before I move on, I just want to ask. Uh, do you have any questions or do you want to comment on anything that I just discussed? I have a quick question. What is this called in the, um, the, the Blackboard site, like this PowerPoint? Oh, so the, on the Blackboard? Yeah, because I can't, I can't find it. Okay, uh, maybe uh, I will check that uh, during our break. Okay. Yeah, but okay. you can have the slides, yes. Um, thank you, Adam. Um, so for the emerging technologies, uh, nowadays we most like, uh, we mostly talk about virtual reality or augmented reality. Uh, and uh, we have, we will have one class especially for that. Um, and also we have been uh, using Internet of Things for a long time, uh, but it's still a trend. Um, and uh, the usage of IoT is still expanding. Uh, and of course, we are also seeing a surge in the use of drones in different domains, uh, especially delivery and other things. Um, and uh, in the business domain, we are um, using the XBRL or inline XBRL, and we will uh, we will have one class especially for uh, this as well. Uh, so it's okay uh, if you don't understand the term for now. Uh, and also the term big data and analytics is also very hot nowadays um, because there is a surge in uh, different social platforms, um, a surge in internet usage, and uh, the data produced in different sources is uh, increasing. Uh, is increasingly tremendously. Um, of course, we are talking about artificial intelligence, and we will also have one class especially for that. Uh, machine learning. Um, so machine learning is basically a computational technology that can achieve artificial intelligence. And we will also uh, talk about the difference between AI and machine learning. Also, we have blockchain smart contracts, um, and we also will teach you uh, what is a blockchain um, and uh, uh, what's the difference between blockchain and smart contracts. Uh, robotic process automation, uh, quantum computing, and 5G networks. So these are the emerging technologies that we are uh, we see uh, in the news or uh, from our daily talk uh, very often. Uh, so we will cover these topics uh, throughout this class. 